I bet you've all heard that song before. Probably you learned it when you were young, just as I did. I learned it at preschool, and we sang it over and over and over again. We would probably drive our teachers and parents crazy, but we had fun singing it. So just to make sure, we're all going to sing it one more time all together. This time, you sing it up here, and I'm down here, everybody all together. One, two, here we sing. I almost got tripped up on the Merrilies. Um, anyway, I'm sure you've sung that before. The way we did it just now, where everybody starts at the same time and sings the whole song together and then finishes together, it sounds okay, but that's not usually how we do the song. It's usually done in what's called a round, where one group starts the song, right? And then a little bit later, a second group starts. And then the first group finishes the song. And then a little bit later, the second group finishes. Right? So not everybody starts and finishes at the same time, even though they're all singing the same exact thing, just staggered. So we're going to try that now. I'm going to do the first part. When I look at you, you can come in with the second part. All right. Here I go. Good. So I started first and finished first. I hope you started second and finished second. If so, then we did the round perfectly. This time you're going to start. So I'm going to count you in, and then I'm going to be the second part. Ready? One, two, here you go. If you started first and finished first, I hope so because I started second and finished second. So that's the example of a round. That was a two-part round or canon, right? Often you can do that in four parts. So if you have four people or four groups, you can have them all sing that song. It would go kind of like this. You probably already know. But just so you know, I'm going to hold up my fingers when each new group would come in. Now I can't play them all at the same time on the piano because that's four parts and I only have two hands and some of the parts are crisscrossing and it would be hard to hear, but here's how it would go, right? It would be like this. One, then two, three, group four. Right, so that's where each group would come in and usually you'd repeat the song over and over and over again. That's why it's kind of fun because it's an easy song to learn. It's super short. Right, But if you split it up into four groups, you can sing it in a round or canon. And then it, you have all this great harmony out of such an easy song. So today we're going to be talking for the first part of class about rounds or canons. Now we have to talk about one of the most famous rounds of all time. I'm sure you've heard it before. I'm going to hold up my fingers where the four parts often happen. Um, I'll sing it in English first goes like this. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Right, and again, where I held up each finger, a new part would have come in. It's one of the greatest rounds ever written. We don't know who wrote it, but I love it for several reasons. Um, and you're thinking, yeah, it's just a little kid song. Maybe, but it's brilliantly written. Not only can it work as a four-part round, it also it can work as an echo song because each line is basically a copy of itself, right? So we're going to do it in French where I'm going to sing the first set of words and you're going to do the echo. Okay, it goes like this. It's called... Frère Jacques in French, which means Brother Jack or Brother John. All right, so just echo me. Frère Jacques, don't 
Good. And don't worry if you don't get the French exactly perfectly. It's just for the song to talk about the round. So basically in French it means the same thing as English. It's uh, is brother Jack or brother John. And then is are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? And then is basically ring the morning bells, about the morning bells ringing. And then ding, ding, dong. In French sometimes they sing Dan, dan, dong. But for now, we're just going to go ding, ding, dong. So the easy version. All right. So you're going to hear this song three times. The first time is what's called unison, which is easy. That's where everybody starts singing at the beginning, sings the whole thing together, and finishes together. So that's your chance to kind of bone up on the words in case they're a little bit unfamiliar. The second and third time, you're going to hear it in a two-part round. So you have several choices. You can either... Sing with the first group, or wait until they get to the second line and sing with the second group, and continue that all the way through. Or if you're feeling ambitious, you can wait till the first group gets to the third set of lyrics, right? The sonnele mattina, and you would start the frere jaca there, and you'd be in the third group. Or you can try being in the fourth group. Either way, pick one and just keep singing that all the way through. So remember, the first time is everybody all together. And then the second time through is when you get to pick one group and stick with it all the way through to the end. And you might hear a little extra music at the end. That's just to allow for if there were four groups singing. So here it is, Frère Jacques, in French, en français. So what makes for a really good round? Well, the secret has to do with something that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. But before I get into the secret, I wanted to share with you another round that you've probably never heard before. It has fun words about a car. And it's, why doesn't my car go as fast as your car when I paid twice as much money for my car? Mm. Did you hear the round in that song about the cars? How one group started, then the other group started a little bit behind, and it was kind of like playing a game of copycat, but it never caught up. It just, they kept going, and then the first group ended and the second group ended. So that's the round. I know it's a new song to you. You probably weren't able to sing along, because I know sometimes it takes me several listenings before I really have something down. So 
Anyway, so what makes for a great round? Well, there's a secret. And actually, let's talk about, well, couldn't you do that with any song? Just take, have one group start and then have another group start a little bit behind. Well, you could do that with any song. And you'd find out that some songs work really well that way. Others, you'll hear a little bit of a clash not too long into it. So let's take a song that you've also heard before. God is so good. You know that one, right? God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. That's another song that's pretty easy to learn. Sounds good. Let's try it as a round and see what happens. I'm going to play it on the piano. The second part. Well, the beginning and end sounded pretty good, right? Did you hear how there's a little bit of a clash in the middle? Or you heard some, some things that didn't quite sound as good together as other parts? Well, the secret is all in the triad. Remember, we've been talking about the triad the last couple weeks, and it's a super important building block for music. Um, so let's talk about our rounds and how they fit in with the triad. So what am I talking about? Well, first remember, our triad is it's just this do, it's do, mi, so, three notes, right? And you could have high do at the top. So anytime you have any two of those notes together, it really sounds good, right? It sounds like something. So let's take our first round, which was row, row, row your boat, right? Row, row, row your boat. Well, that starts right on do, right? So there's do, 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 re, ends on me, then me is the second part, starts on me, so, right? And then high do, right? Do, then so, fa, me, re, do. So the beginning, or downbeat, of every line highlights a note from the triad, right? Do, Mi, and then Do, So. So on the strong beats, there's a lot of triad action happening. So that's the secret. Let's try the next one. We had Frere Jaca, or Brother John, right? And now this is our Do is different. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do is this note, or Do, Do. So the triad would be do mi so so mi do. So here it goes. Starts on do, right? Do re mi do. Then it happens again. Mi fa so mi fa so and then so so do so do do so. So again. The start of each line really highlighted something from the triad, right, on the strong beats. Let's try the last one we just did, oh, the song about cars, right? That one, right? So our do, it begins at so fa, mi, re, do, or do, you can sing it in either octave, do, do. Our triad would be do, mi, so. So let's listen to that song. It goes like, Do, Mi, So, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. So again, the beginning of each line really highlights that triad, right? So it sounds good when they all line up together. You get a lot of triad action. Sounds great. So what happened with God is so good? Well, first of all, God is still good, and the song is great, but it's not so great as a round. Now here's why. It starts on Do. That's a good start, right? Do, Do, Mi. Oh, there's a lot of triad, right? It ends on Re. Now, when you start the second line, you have Re and Do together. They're only one note apart, so it's a little bit of a clash. And again, you're ending on Mi and Re together. So then you have Fa and Mi together. So you have a lot of notes right next to each other on the scale. That's what you call a second. It's not, it doesn't make for the great harmony if you have only that. Right? A little clash is good here and there, 
but if you have nothing but that, it's a little jarring. So that's why God is so good, the song, doesn't work so well in a round, because the triad is not emphasized on the first line of each, um, first note of each line. So, all right, something to think about when you're singing rounds. At the end of October, there's usually at least two things that we celebrate. Um, one involves, let's see, pumpkins and ghosts and skeletons, sometimes candy. Halloween, yes, I'm thinking of that. So we have, in keeping with our theme of the round, we have a fun Halloween round. It's called The Ghost of Tom. It goes like this. Have you seen the ghost of Tom? Long white bones with this flesh all gone. Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? Creepy, right? So there's some motions I have that go with it. I'll just review those before you get to hear the whole thing. First, you're looking for the ghost, right? Ghost of Tom. Some people sing Ghost of John, or it could be Ghost of Don, Ghost of Ron, Ghost of Jan. It doesn't matter as it kind of rhymes with the word gone. All right, so first you're looking. Have you seen the ghost of Tom? And then there's long white bones. On long white bones with the flesh all gone, you imagine that the flesh is coming off the bones, right? Long white bones with the flesh all gone. And it creeps you out so much, on line three, you're going, Ooh, right? It's almost like you turn into a ghost, and then you realize it's cold, right? Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? So think of those motions. It's kind of creepy, but Halloween's coming up. So think of those motions as you watch the song go by. Something else that we celebrate in October, especially in church, or well, especially in a Lutheran church and school, is Martin Luther and the Reformation. So um, I'm not going to get into the whole history of the Reformation right now, because this is a music class, but um, one of the great hymns that Martin Luther wrote is A Mighty Fortress. And I'm sure you've heard it before. of a fun, peppy tune. He wrote the tune. He also wrote the words. They're both great, and when you put them together, it's great. Now, do you remember the body percussion we did a few weeks ago? This time, we're going to put body per percussion along with a mighty fortress, and that's why I'm hoping you remember your vegetable rhythms from last week, especially cauliflower, because that's going to come in handy right now. All right, I wanted to start out just by throwing the whole thing up here, the whole body percussion that goes to a mighty fortress. As you can see, there's a lot going on, kind of some different rhythms and things. You might recognize some things you see. If you feel like, oh my gosh, I can't figure out the whole thing, 
that's okay because I'm going to break it down for you. So, um, and I think next week I'll probably explain where I got the idea for this whole thing. So, but for now I just want to make sure we get started. So, the whole reason or one reason I did vegetable rhythms last week is that I knew we we're going to do some of these rhythms this week. So on our plates with the vegetables, some of the plates had beans, right? If you had a plate of beans, that's just one beat, right? Or one syllable, or ta, which is a quarter note. There's a few of those in this rhythm, right? There's a ta, let's see, see another one. Ta, hope oh, this one, ta, there's two ta's in a row. Some ta's here at the end of these things. So yes, there's a bunch of quarter note ta. Some of your plates of vegetables had carrots, right? Carrots is two sounds on one beat, so that would be carrot or titi, right? Which is eighth note. Oh, there's a few of these, right? So this would be like titi, 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 ta, right? Or carrot, 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 beans. All right. Let's see. We also had plates of cauliflower, right? I had to do cauliflower because that's the first thing that starts out this rhythm. Now, if you don't want to say cauliflower, you can say tikka tikka, right? That's four sounds with your mouth. Tikka tikka, kind of like we say ta, titi, tikka tikka is a good thing to use for cauliflower. All right, so that's when you have the four 16th notes, so four sounds on one beat. That's how this whole thing starts out. Now notice that the 16th notes, there's four of them, and they're joined at the top, right? But if you look carefully, I'll maybe blow it up for you, but you'll see there's two beams connecting the top. Tikka Tikka has two beams on top. Eighth notes, TT only has one beam on the top, right? So there's a difference. The more beams you have, the faster it goes. So, all right, so these are Tikka Tikka. This first measure, if I had to say the Tikka Tikkas and the Tas, it would sound like this. Tikka Tikka Ta, Tikka Tikka Ta, right? Or cauliflower beans, cauliflower beans, if we had our plates out. All right, so now I'm going to start breaking it down for you. Okay, this is the first line of the body percussion. So let's just look with our eyes, see what it looks like. Let's see, there's something here. Now that something happens again. And it looks like it happens again. So even without hearing anything, I can kind of imagine there's three of the same thing. And then this part doesn't really look the same, does it? That's something different. Right, so the first part is ticket ticket ta Right, so we have to put three of those in a row. It sounds like this. It's ticket ticket ta ticket ticket ta ticket ticket ta this is not ticket ticket ta right it's something different there's something different i'll do it after the ticket ticket ta's sounds like this ready here we go ticket ticket ta ticket ticket ta ticket ticket ta boom 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 and i'm saying the boom 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 for a reason i'll let you know in just a second all right so the whole line goes like this again it's ticket ticket ta ticket ticket ta ticket ticket ta Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm saying boom, 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 because when I first came up with this idea, I was thinking of drums in my head. So I was thinking of like cymbals and snare drums and like floor toms for the boom, boom, boom. All right. So let's do this rhythm one more time just to get that in your ear. It sounds like this. One, two, here I go. Ticka, ticka, ta, ticka, ticka, ta, ticka, ticka, ta, boom, boom, boom. All right. So for ticka ticka, you can see there's a word, thighs, right? You're going to be slapping your thighs. The ticka tickas, clap, you clap on a clap. And then when you get to the boom, 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 you're going to hit your chest, 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 clap. All right. So now I'll show you this line with the body percussion. All right. Here it is with the body percussion. I'm going to slow it down a little bit so there's time to get it right. All right. So one, two, three. Here I go. Ticka ticka ta, ticka ticka ta, ticka ticka ta, chest chest clap. Let me try that again. I'll count myself in. One, two, 
here I go. Tick it to guitar, tick it to guitar, tick it to guitar, chest, chest. Ooh, I'm gonna try that whole thing twice in a row, and you can try it with me. Ready? One, two, here we go. Tick it to guitar, tick it to guitar, tick it to guitar, chest, chest. Tick it to guitar, tick it to guitar, tick it to guitar, chest, chest. Good, so notice right after that last clap, you have to head right back to your ticka ticka. All right, I wonder if you can try it four times in a row, and I'm gonna sing the tune of A Mighty Fortress so you can see how it lines up. Let's go kind of slowly. All right, ready? A one, two, here we go. A ticka ticka dum, da 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 dum. Good. That takes care of the beginning and the end of the piece. Now we have to work on the middle section. Okay, here we go. The rhythm for the middle section. It sounds like this. I'll just perform it for you. It goes like stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. I'll stop there before you panic. All right, it's actually not that bad. Um, let's just try the butterfly. So for butterfly, I put my arms out in front of me. As you can see, I've, they're kind of out away from my body, not in like this, and you just go butterfly, right? It's like down, up, down. Doesn't matter which hand's on top, either hand, it's butterfly. So here, I'm gonna say the first part, and then we're all gonna do the butterfly when that happens, ready? So a little slower, it's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, Butterfly. Good, it does it a fourth time, but then there's something a little different at the end. All right, now let's work on the stomp clap. So I'm gonna do it once slowly, then I'll make sure you can see my feet. So it's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap. All right, now you'll be able to see my feet. Okay, here's the stomp clap part. It doesn't matter which foot stomps first, you can pick. So it goes like this, I go stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. I'm just going to loop that rhythm. Let's do that rhythm, say, four times in a row just to practice it. Ready? Nice and slow. You can go with me. One, uh, two, uh, here we go. It's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap. Again, stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. Again, stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. And again, stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap. Good. Now we're just going to put the butterfly at the end of it. Let's do that three times in a row. Ready? One, two, a uh, here we go. It's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. That was three, right? On the fourth one, it's a little different. First I'll show you and then I'll show you what the music looks like. The fourth one goes like this. It's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, knees, knees. Because then we're about to do the ending, which you've already learned. So let me try that fourth one. It's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, knees, knees. And if you miss the first knees, you'll get the second one because it's big. All right. Here's that last stomp clap. It looks like this. It's Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, knees, knees. And I like to make the knees, knees really big because that's like ta, ta. It's like saying I've gotten to the end of this section. So let's try this whole stomp, clap section and then we'll put the whole thing together. So it's three times through the stomp, claps with a butterfly at the end, right? Three butterflies. The last one has knees, knees. And we took one little clap out. All right, let's try it. I'll go super slow in the middle section. One, two, here we go. It's stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, butterfly. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, clap, 
Butterfly number three. Stomp, stomp, clap, clap. Butterfly number four. Stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. Knees, knees. And then the very end is the same as the first line. It goes like this. It's thighs, clap, thighs, clap, thighs, clap. Chest, chest, clap. All right. Let's try the whole thing super slow. All right, now we're gonna try the whole thing. So the first line and the last line are the same thing, right? It's the ticka ticka ta, ticka ticka ta, ticka ticka ta, chest, chest, clap, right? Except in the beginning, you do it four times in a row because it goes with the tune pretty well, right? The last time you only do it once. The middle section, remember there's the stomp clap things, three of them, with the butterfly, and then the last one has the knees, knees to get you ready for the ending. All right, let's go nice and slow. I'll try to sing the whole tune as we go. All right, let's see, get a good C. Ba -bum. All right, here we are, ready? Nice and slow, the whole thing. One, two, three, and four. Ba -ba -ba. Did you make it to the end? Congratulations. So practice that. For next week, we're gonna to try to go a little bit faster, and I'll tell you the idea of how I came up with this whole thing in the first place. All right.